Did anyone notice how Alex thinks she had a say in this head of household? It was adorable. Hello everyone, I'm Dan the Man. Well, this was far from the most surprising week as it was pretty much a given that if Cody did not win the safety competition or the veto, he was going to jury. And while there was more suspense in the second eviction of the double eviction night, I think most knew if Cody was gone, Mark or Elena were next. But even with it not being too shocking of a week, a lot did happen, so I'm going to get to it. First off was the safety competition. It was so bizarre to have the suspense in that competition built around who would lose, but that's Big Brother for you. I got to admit, Cody's big blunder in throwing the competition was as Paul said. Cody may not have remembered hearing any of the sounds in the have-not room, but he never set foot in the head of household room at all that week. So him not picking that every time was a very bad move. Paul was right about where Cody went wrong. Well, that's if you believe Cody's real mistake wasn't trying to throw the competition instead of winning it. Obviously, hindsight's 2020, but I thought from the get-go it was a bad move for him to throw that competition. He had no real good options, and I get he at least was leaving it so he couldn't be backdoored and would have a chance to win veto, but if he had won the safety competition, he wouldn't need the veto in the first place, so why take your chance? It was one thing when he and Jessica were trying to both survive last week, and they couldn't both win safety, but this time I think he was wrong to throw it. And there would have still been a chance for him getting picked for veto anyway, even if he failed to win safety, so he should have just gone for it. Granted, Dowdy would have beaten Mark even if he had tried to win, and as we saw, he wasn't picked for veto, but while it likely didn't matter in the end, I think he would have been better to try and win. But as I said, hindsight's always 20-20, and I'm sure looking back, Cody could find many, many mistakes he's made. Cody did try to play nice and be social for once, so I commend him for finally trying to play the game, or at least play the social game. He also tried to plant some seeds and make some new allies. But while the entity did look like his pitches to try and work with other people were at least being considered, in truth, I saw almost all of those conversations play out on the feeds, and in all of them, including the ones I missed, which I later looked up, every time Cody pitched any plans to anyone, they immediately went and told Paul. Even Cody telling Kevin about his daughter, which was played as an emotional moment, Kevin immediately went and told Paul about his daughter. As we saw, Cody was not picked to play in the veto, which sealed his fate, and he went up on the block and was voted out. He pretty much gave up after not being picked to play for veto, and an argument could definitely be made he should have tried to chip away and make some kind of deal to save himself. But in truth, it never would have worked. Cody had made his bed, and by now Paul had everyone too under his thumb that any attempts to cut a deal or change people's minds would have just gone right back to Paul, and at the least done no good, and at the worst, started another shouting match and another multiple people on Cody attack. The one brief moment of hope Cody had was when Elena took the money in the veto competition and left Alex with the punishment, going back on the agreement she made literally right before doing that. That's got to be the biggest going back on someone's word people have done in BB history. So at least Elena made that record. Alex was as pissed as Big Brother led us to believe. They showed some of it, but that first day Alex had the punishment, Big Brother was relentless. And Alex, being the little bitter bitch he is, was fuming more and more as it went on. And make no mistake, under that smiling, hyper, cute, tiny little exterior lies the heart of a spoiled, entitled bitch. Alex started talking about getting out of Elena and even asked Matt if he'd be willing to use the veto on himself to keep Cody off and seal Elena's fate with Cody not on the block. And Matt did agree he would do it. I honestly think the reason Big Brother was so relentless with that punishment is because they saw that there was a chance Alex would go against Paul's wishes and get out Elena. And make no mistake, Big Brother would have been way happier to lose Elena and keep Cody, even if, ironically, they both went home at the end of the week. But I never thought for a minute Alex was actually going to go through with it. Because here's the thing, for whatever reason, take your pick, Paul has these people dancing to his tune. They're doing whatever he says, and no one will tell him no and do their own thing. Paul wanted Cody gone because he knew Cody was going to put him up, and nothing Paul would say or do at that point was, would change Cody's mind because he didn't care what Paul had to say. So Paul was never going to agree to get Elena out, and without Daddy's permission, no alternate plans were ever going to be carried out. And sure enough... Matt used the veto and took down Jason, Cody went up, and with no more twists to save him, Cody finally went home. For good this time. But before going over if it was the right choice or not, I want to briefly discuss the big controversy that went on 
which was their treatment of him in his final days. After Cody went up on the block, he resigned himself to his fate and isolated himself as usual. He couldn't pretend to be nice anymore now that it did him no good, and the old Cody was back. For some reason, everyone was surprised and super pissed. I have no idea why, but they seem to think with Cody's fate sealed, he should just acknowledge all his mistakes, apologize, and explain everything he did. Especially Christmas, who seemed to think God himself demanded that Cody should now explain why he put her up to her. Cody was not having any of it, and basically, while in slightly less hostile words, slightly, told them all they could F off, and he wasn't talking to them anymore. This led to their usual ganging up and screaming at him, and Christmas was livid Cody would not tell her whatever she apparently wanted to hear about him putting her up. She likely wanted him to cry into her arms and apologize to her or something, I don't know. Kevin even said Cody should be a real man and just lay out his entire game plan to everyone. Since when has anyone ever been obligated, or hell, even expected to do that? All but Mark and Elena, as usual, ganged up on him, and it was World War III all over again. Now Cody's an ass, and he made his bed. I have no sympathy for him, and if Paul hadn't been in the game, Cody very likely would be in great shape by this point, and he'd be the one treating other people like garbage. Albeit he'd probably not be telling everyone to scream at people. But the issue with it I have, and that other have, is that there was no reason for any of this. Cody was gone, he was out the door, and he wasn't even trying to save himself anymore. Not that it would matter, and he was leaving everyone alone. So there was no reason for any of it. They weren't doing it for game, they were just tormenting him, or trying to torment him, because they didn't like him and they wanted him to suffer. They even implied he didn't care about Jessica since he let, since he let her use the hex to him, and anyone with half a brain would know he clearly cared about her, but they didn't care about Jessica anyway, so they weren't asking out of concern, they were asking because they knew it would upset Cody to ask him that. They also questioned what kind of a father he was, which I think is way over the line to ever bring into it, and I'm sure if Cody had asked Kevin or Jason that, he would have been the most monstrous monster in the existence of all monsters. Yes, people have done worse. Hi, Dick. Oh, and look, here's Amanda. But I'm not a fan of making personal attacks just because you can when it accomplishes nothing but trying to hurt someone's feelings. It's childish and it's cowardly considering they knew they had practically the whole house to back them. And even if Mark and Alayda were going to participate, they were not going to defend Cody either for fear of being next. It's what I don't like about this season. This is basically season 16 with one person running everything and picking people off at their leisure, except unlike season 16, it's being done in as mean and hateful a way as possible. Again, yeah, not the worst behavior ever, but not enjoyable for me to watch either. Although obviously, some are loving the drama. So with that done, was Cody the right choice? Well, not for Elena or Mark, but given his fate was sealed, I get why they didn't vote for someone else. Considering that Elena went home right after Cody, and Mark's almost surely going to get attacked anyway, it probably didn't change anything, but can't blame them for not wanting to make their situation worse with no payoff for it. For everyone else, well, arguably getting the other couples to break up would be the better move, so not sure if everyone benefited from Cody being gone, and Matt Raven and Kevin are next after Elena and Mark, it would seem. So all they're doing is helping people who are going to take them out soon get rid of other people before that. But that being said, Cody is unpleasant and keeps the house feeling uncomfortable and he's not a reliable ally. So at the end of the day, he was a good choice for all but two people in the house. Then it was on to the double eviction. And like Cody last eviction, Mark knew he was gone if he didn't win veto. Some argue everyone should have tried to backdoor Mark. But the truth is, if Mark had not gone on the block and his name had been picked, he could have saved Elena and they would have been really screwed, as they wouldn't have their top two choices available and they'd likely then have had to take out Matt, which would alienate Raven and leave the others with three enemies in the house, which if one of them then one had a household could do a lot of damage. Big Brother 101, if you have two people you want to get out, especially a pair you're trying to break up, you put both of them on the block. Then there's no scenario where one of them doesn't go. Better the least desirable member of a pair goes home than neither of them go home. Then as we saw, Mark won the veto and Elena's fate was sealed. In truth, if Paul had a full week to stir up resentment, hate, and rally the mob, I think he would have gotten everyone to vote out Matt. He did try, as we saw on Friday's show, but with so little time even he couldn't wear people down enough to give him his way, so Elena went home. Honestly, I don't think she was that disappointed. She clearly felt her days were numbered and saw that Paul had everyone so entranced there was nothing she realistically was going to be able to do to change their mind. Some would argue she could have tried harder, 
And yeah, if you don't try, you're never going to succeed. But Paul had turned the house on her so much, and no one was going to make a move without his okay, that I don't think there was anything she could have done to keep from ultimately going home. I think had she survived this week, she would have stayed a few more weeks while they broke up Matt and Raven and got rid of Kevin, but she still would have gone eventually, barring a huge shakeup. And she would have spent that time constantly being attacked for anything they could find to attack her for, just like they've done to anyone who's not in Paul's alliance anymore. I think that's the reason that Elena ultimately took the 5000 She quit her job to go on Big Brother, and she knew her days were numbered. So she took the money and ran. Had she not taken it, she likely would have gone home the exact same time, in the exact same way. Arguably, it was a bad game move, but given the 1% chance it would have changed anything if she took the punishment, she decided, screw it, and chose going home with extra money, over suffering, and still going home in the near future anyway. Was she the right choice? Honestly, they probably would have been better to take out Matt and split up the last remaining showmance. Raven would be pissed, but it's highly unlikely she and Elena could have worked together to do anything about it anyway. But given the short time they had, I don't blame them for taking out Elena instead. When you have that little time, you tend to go with the plan you had before, and while I think Paul had intended to have time to change people's minds had it not been double eviction, the plan at the time was to take out Elena next. So that's what they did. As we know, they had an extra episode on Friday, but it was a glorified clip show, even if the footage was new footage that didn't really show much. They do these most years, and while they were a bit more creative in their execution than most seasons, it still ultimately didn't matter. Although the look on Paul's face as he thought for a minute Derek might be entering the game was hilarious. The head of household competition started, but they cut away. But as usual, due to live feeds, I know who won. So if you don't want to know, stop now. Really, stop now. Last chance. Christmas won the head of household. I'm making this video after the veto had already gone down, so I'm not going to go ahead and predict who went up, since I know who went up. But going in, I assumed if anyone besides Mark won the head of household, that the plan was going to be to backdoor Mark. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to comment, give the video a thumbs up, and subscribe. And hit that bell for notifications on new videos. I'll be back next week with my thoughts on Paul's head of household via Christmas, the new Temptation twist, which I know nothing about, but that it's a Big Brother twist, so I'm sure I'm not going to like it, and whatever other insanity happens next week. I'm Dan the Man, and I'll see you next time.